judgment in the matter of Singularis Holdings Limited, a company incorporated in the Cayman Islands versus Jaiwa Capital Markets North Limited. Normally, banks have a duty to act promptly upon their customers' instructions to make payments from their accounts. But they also owe a duty of care to their customers not to make payments if they know the instructions to be dishonestly given, or shut their eyes to obvious dishonesty, or act recklessly in failing to make inquiries. This is known as the quince care duty of care, following the 1992 case in which the duty was identified. In this case, the bank's customer was a company, Singularis, set up to manage the personal assets of Mr. Man al Sanaya. He was the sole shareholder, a director, and the chairman, president, and treasurer. There were six other directors, but they did not exercise any influence over the management of the company. Sole signing powers over the company's bank accounts rested with Mr. al Sanaya. In 2007, the Appellant Investment Bank, Daiwa, provided Singularis with a loan to finance the purchase of shares. The shares were the security for the repayment of the loan. In 2009, the shares were sold, the loan was repaid, and Daiwa held a cash surplus of over 200 million US dollars for the account of Singularis. By that time, Singularis, having had a legitimate business, was in financial difficulties. Mr. al instructed Daiwa to pay out those funds to entities with which he was associated in the Saad group. The payments were a misappropriation of Singularis's funds and left Singularis unable to meet the demands of its creditors. The judge held that this was a clear breach of the Quinscare duty of care to the company. Any reasonable banker would have realized that there were many obvious, even glaring signs that Mr. al was perpetrating a fraud on the company. He was clearly using the funds for his own purposes and not for the purpose of benefiting Singularis. Daiwa was well aware of the dire financial straits in which Mr. al and the Saad group found themselves at the time. It was aware that Singularis might have other substantial creditors with an interest in the money. There was plenty of evidence to put it on notice that there was something seriously wrong with the way that Mr. al was operating the Singularis account. In short, quote, everyone recognized that the account needed to be closely monitored, but no one in fact exercised care or caution or monitored the account themselves, and no one checked that anyone else was actually doing any exercising or monitoring either, end quote. Hence, the judge ordered Daiwa to pay damages to the company, albeit with a 25% discount for the company's own contributory negligence in letting it happen. Daiwa's appeal to the Court of Appeal was dismissed, and it now appeals to this court. The argument is that Mr. al was the controlling mind of the company, and so his fraud should be attributed to the company. If it is attributed to the company, Daiwa argues that it would have various defences to the company's Quinscare claim. The first defence they suggest it is suggested is illegality, that Mr. al provision of false documents in relation to the payments and his breach of fiduciary duty towards the company. However, as the judge found, Fiduciary duties are intended to protect a company from becoming the victim of the wrongful exercise of power by the company's officers. That purpose would not be enhanced by preventing the company's recovery of the money wrongfully removed from its account. So the illegality defense was unpromising. The second defense suggested was that the company's loss was caused by its own fault and not by that of the bank. However, the purpose of the Quinscare duty is to protect the bank's customers from harm caused by people for whom the customer is responsible. The fraudulent instruction to Daiwa gave rise to the duty of care, which Daiwa breached, thus causing the loss. So that defense is also unpromising. The third defense suggested was that 
Daiwa would have a countervailing claim in fraud against the company, which would cancel out the company's loss. However, the judge held that Daiwa's breach of duty and not Mr. Alcinair's misrepresentations was the cause of Daiwa's exposure to the claim for Singularis's loss. So that too was not promising. It follows that none of the suggested defences was promising, even if the court were to hold that Mr. Alcinair's fraud was to be attributed to the company. But in any event, it could not be. The basic principle is that a properly incorporated company has an identity and legal personality separate from that of its shareholders and directors. The company has to act through the medium of real human beings, of course, but the acts of those persons are only treated as the acts and intentions of the company in the circumstances specified by its constitution or by the ordinary rules of agency and vicarious liability or some other specific rule of law. None of these applied in this case. The fact is that a company with a substantial business traded for some years and ran up debts in doing so. It also had a substantial sum of money standing to its credit as a result of its legitimate business activities with its broker bankers, Daiwa. When it appeared that the company was running into difficulties, its directing mind and sole shareholder fraudulently deprived the company of that money by directing the bank to pay it away. The bank should have realised that something suspicious was going on and suspended payment until it had made reasonable inquiries to satisfy itself that the payments were properly to be made. The company and through the company, its creditors, has been the victim of the bank's negligence. Hence, the Supreme Court unanimously dismisses the bank's appeal. As counsel for the company put it, this case is bristling with simplicity. The court will now adjourn. Thank you.